Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Hearts Farm 4 as we are playing with the Netherlands. Alright, so before we get started, I'd like to apologize that uh, this video wasn't out on Monday like I was really hoping to have it done. Uh, unfortunately, I had to get stuck at work uh, fairly late last night. I typically get out between like 1 to 3 in the morning. 3 is not usual, but you know, it's 2 in the morning, 1 in the morning, something like that. I didn't get out until 4 in the morning. Uh, it's one of the latest times I've gotten out. Uh, I don't think I got home till it was almost 5 o'clock in the morning. And um, then I didn't go right to bed, you know, I showered eight, you know, relaxed a little bit. So I didn't go to bed till pretty late or pretty early this morning. I don't know how you'd want to say that. Pretty late for me anyways. And so I didn't wake up until early afternoon. I think it was like an hour and a half where I had to pick the kids up. So I didn't even bother recording. Uh, I got the kids from school already. And so here I am recording at 5.30 p.m. right now. Uh, so obviously there's no way this video is going to be out before Monday's uh, up, uh, so it will be on Tuesday. It's unfortunate, guys. The main reason why I was stuck there uh, is because we had six patients come in after 11.45. We close at midnight, or urgent care closes at midnight, and I have to stay there until urgent care, uh, until all the, the patients and urgent care staff leave. Uh, I do walk all the staff out to their cars. We got a really dark parking lot. Uh, if I had a vagina, I would I would want to be uh, walked out to my car as well, so I don't, I don't blame them. Uh, for wanting to be walked out so i do walk them all out so i gotta wait till every staff member leaves uh so so yeah if if you're going anywhere that's not like a quick you know run in and get your stuff and run out you know whether it's a restaurant or urgent care or wherever don't be a fucking bastard and and walk in 10 minutes before they close good god man uh so so yeah that was that was frustrating guys and that did result in us not having this video up on monday so sorry about that uh also as some of you guys know, we've been having monetization issues uh, with this series, uh, and I couldn't really tell you why. Now, some people are a little bit confused in the comments, it seems. They keep thinking that uh, you know maybe it's the music uh, that are uh, maybe causing issues, maybe turn the music off. That's a completely different thing. That's a copyright claim. Uh, when somebody old holds the copyright to something in their video, whether it's music or, or whatever, and then typically monetization is not turned off. What happens is they uh, the, the monetization is still on, but the money doesn't go to the YouTuber. It goes to the copyright claim uh, holder. Uh, the copyright holder. So that's not what this is, guys. This is uh, the little yellow monetization icon. You might have heard of it before. It's called limited monetization. It's basically declaring YouTube has declared uh, their you know automatic system has declared that your video is not appropriate. So therefore, you get very very few ads on it. There's not a lot of ads for the limited monetization. It's almost no monetization essentially. And both episode one and two did get hit with that. That was the reason why episode one was so late on Saturday. I was, it was supposed to be out like. 12 hours before that, before I actually did put it out, but I was waiting for them to review monetization, manually review it, and they did, and then they approved it, of course. Uh, with the second episode, once again, I gave them 10 hours uh, to, to try and approve it, and, and it never got reviewed, uh, so I just put it out because it was already pretty late on Sunday, 3 p.m., so we put it out, and of course, it didn't get uh, approved until Monday morning. And I think that this is going to be the case with every single video for this series. I don't know what it is, guys. My Hearts of Iron content doesn't usually get hit. Some of our other stuff does because it's, you know, we have more kind of adult commentary. Uh, but yeah, Hearts of Iron usually doesn't. My wife has a theory, Jinx has a theory that it has to do with having Netherlands in the title with another word that happens to be in the title because of what happened last month in the Netherlands. I don't even want to say because I'm worried that that will make it more likely that this gets hit. Uh, but she thinks that might be it, and that's the only thing it could possibly be. I, I really don't think it's the thumbnail, guys. All, we have a lot of hard man thumbnails that have way more skin than this one, so I don't think that's the case. Every video is going to get hit, and I'm really in a dilemma whether I should put them out without monetization or whether I should wait the however long, you know, 12 to 24. It took them, no, it took them 36 hours to approve episode 2. Uh, so... I don't know whether I should wait or not, but it, it really does affect us. Uh, I know that these videos don't get like, they get, you know, maybe 2,000 views or whatever, so it doesn't seem like that's worth a lot of money. It's a few dollars. It's a few dollars, and it doesn't seem like a big deal, guys. But when you do that every day, every day you get hit and you lose a few dollars, that ends up being like 100 bucks over the month. And 100 bucks may not be a lot of money for some of you guys, but for us really poor folk, $100 is a lot of money. Uh, so I'm not sure how to deal with that. That's just something I'm trying to... So this could even make the video even later than I want it to be because I'll be waiting on monetization. I don't know. I'd love to hear you guys' thought on it, thoughts on it, whether I should just put them out. I mean, I guess you guys would probably just want them out as soon as you, you can get them. But as I said, monetization is kind of important to us at this point because we do kind of rely on this money a little bit. Uh, so that's another issue. But enough with that. I've already talked way too long about this, so sorry about the long intro, guys. I uh, didn't mean for this to be that long. But, you know, I can't be long-winded. 
So let's go ahead and get started with actual stuff regarding the campaign. Uh, I did want to address some of the issues brought up in the comments, some of the things that have been brought up in the comments. First of all, somebody um, suggested uh, a name for division designs, uh, and I'm only it was only one of only a couple division design names, maybe two uh, suggestions. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this open to allow more suggestions. And what I'm gonna do with one of those suggested names, uh, somebody else had said maybe we should name our army since we're not gonna have that many armies. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, name that, use that suggestion for the division and name the army after that. Uh, Cause I think uh, this is very fitting. Uh, I'm not gonna attempt to pronounce that. Uh, you can see it over here if you wanna see the full name. Uh, but essentially I think it, it translates to Royal Dutch Army, Royal Army of the Netherlands or something like that. Uh, so that'll be the name of our army here. And then another thing that was brought up was whether or not we can deploy these units here. Uh, if we can deploy them, somebody said that you can deploy them here and then we wouldn't have to do it by the river. Or, excuse me, do it through the ocean. Have them move all the way from the Dutch East Indies. Uh, and that's not the case. That's what I thought. I was pretty sure you can only deploy them in the homeland. And that's definitely the case. And you can't even deploy them in this area because it has to be their core territory. Uh, which that's not core territory of the Dutch East Indies. So you can only deploy them here. Uh, you cannot deploy them in our land. So I want to make that clear. In case some people might have been confused by that. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and, and build those cruisers that we ended last episode talking about. That we needed to get these, these designed here. I thought I didn't want to do it last episode. Uh, so we're going to take the 1936 cruiser. Uh, and we probably aren't going to be able to build multiple types of cruisers. So we're just going to have to have one because we just don't have the, the dockyards. So we're just going to have one uh, cruiser here that we do have do everything. Uh, go ahead and give them the, uh, do we want to give them, did we not get the new, the new guns? We had the light batteries, but yeah, we don't have, all right, well, that's, that's the best one. I thought we had a better one, but apparently that's not the case. All right, so that's the best one we have. Let's go and give them anti-air, of course, uh, and then we're going to want to give them sonar, because they're going to be doing everything for us, most likely. Give them the cruiser engines, of course, uh, give them secondary bat batteries and some armor. All right, so that looks pretty good. We can't even save it, why? Oh, we have two sonar. Oh, I thought, oh, we only had one. Sonar, oh, we don't have radar. Oops, my bad. I thought we had radar here. We don't have the radar yet. Okay, so that makes sense. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get the rest of the stuff added to it. Uh, we're gonna want to do, let's just take a look. We, we definitely need some depth charges and I wanna say that's the only depth charge slot. Yeah, that's the only depth charge slot. This is just gonna have to be like a catch-all uh, ship that kind of does everything for us because what else are you gonna do? Uh, we're gonna do historical light cruisers. And we have uh, three slots remaining. So what we'll do, we're gonna do two sets of torpedoes here. And then we'll do the uh, uh, the light cruiser battery there. All right, so that's gonna be what it looks like, guys. It's, it's not a fantastic ship. Uh, but it's the best we can do. And I'm gonna use the same naming formula that I used for the American series. I, I like using this. Uh, so we'll call them Torpedo Cruisers. Uh, and then we're gonna have the 2A to say, you know, that they're 1936 cruisers and that this is the uh, alpha model of them. Uh, and I don't think we need, I guess we can change something here if we wanted to. And we could give them, I mean, the shield icon's fine, I suppose. Uh, we could also give them this one. Uh, yeah, you know, we'll give them that one. All right, so that looks pretty good. Uh, so those will be our kind of catch-all light cruisers uh, since we're just not going to have the production to be able to do, you know, specific types of, you know, cruisers that are assigned to more specific roles. So we'll go and save that. And then we're going to want to get these guys building now. Put them at the top and not build so many submarines and build. Uh, and we could also pull open these guys a bit. Try and get one of these done. I'd love to get one done. I wish we could build somewhere else, guys. Um, but we, we cannot. Uh, there's nowhere else we can get these assigned. What we could actually do is assign them to go to these fleets here. Cause yeah, I don't I don't want them going where they're at right now. So that's what we'll do. Uh, we'll go ahead and have them go over to this one so that they move uh, straight to the Dutch East Indies cause we're not gonna be able to move, keep our ships here guys. Uh, so what we're gonna do is let's take all the submarines out here, have these guys go over to this fleet and then I am gonna keep a submarine fleet over here. Uh, and that's the reason why we got these guys over here but we're gonna make sure that they're all crappier submarines since we're probably going to lose them and there's no reason to keep like really good ships over here the reason why we're moving these dutch east indies is because with the british in the conflict you know it's not the germans guys obviously there's there's just no way uh that we're gonna be able to defeat their fleet these are the four submarines that we got constructed uh recently we're gonna throw them over here as well and then we want 10 submarines here like maybe two task force of five so they do need two more two more level one submarines move them over there now 
And then if we have any other level one submarines, looks like we do. We actually have five, excellent. That's how many I wanted to sign up there. That works out nicely. And then let's go ahead and have them uh, go into their own task force, stop them from training, and then move them over to here because we're actually gonna be doing some fighting over there, guys. And sorry about the constant cuts. I, I'm still coughing, guys. I cannot get over this damn cough. It is kicking my ass. So we're gonna go and let these two uh, go here because I think we will need, yeah, at least that many divisions there. The rest of these guys, though, we're gonna go and have them come over to here because I do want to defend that territory. We have one more coming as well, I think. He's right here. Uh, I would like to defend this territory, one, because it's you know important for our resources, and, and two, because I want to see if we can't take this from the British. Uh, if we take all that aluminum from them, that would drastically impact their uh, ability to construct planes. And then from there, we could always launch naval invasions, so we won't really have many ships over here to protect those invasions. To try and take over, I don't really care about the island so much here, but taking Trinidad would hurt them on oil supplies, because remember, the British don't really have much oil supplies. Uh, so yeah, we'll do that. Uh, over here, let's go ahead and request their forces. They have seven divisions, so we're going to request all the forces here. And there we go, got control of those. And then we're going to go ahead and build like an army over here. Uh, and we could just throw them into this one for training purposes for right now. Uh, one of them is currently done. So we'll take him out and put him into a different army. And then we'll have him uh, go over to this front here. We're going to build a front right here uh, and give them an order to defend or excuse me, to attack over here. And then we're gonna go ahead and have, let's assign the generals and stuff. Uh, so with uh, this army, our, our army that's gonna be uh, defending our, our homeland, uh, we're gonna go ahead and give um, General Godfried Van Vorst, Vorst, uh, Vorst I, I probably tore that up, <laughs> that's terrible. He's our better general. Uh, I like that this guy has the skilled staffer so that lets us have more troops in the army. However, uh, I, I want the better defense and attack. I think that's more important. Although, hmm, we might end up having too many divisions over here. Yeah, because we'll have, as of right now, we'll have 25. So I think we do have to give this guy, even with his lower defense. All right, well, whatever. That's what we'll do. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the defense is important, but you know what? Having all of our army, all of our dudes under one general is far more important, I think. Uh, and then this army here can be under the control of the other general. Uh, the better one, and uh, we'll assign all the troops there uh, as they as they go. So this guy's going. Okay, yeah, we're sending him back over to there, uh, and I think he can go into a different army. We'll have him go over here, and then that'll be a separate army that we'll build later once they get there. Uh, and then let's go ahead and take the troops that are here and get them moving around. Uh, we're gonna want. We're gonna need divisions here to defend in the capital, of course, but I think this guy will go to the further port. Go to that port, please. And then we're gonna send these guys over to this one, and then these two over to this one. And I might have grabbed... Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what we did there. Okay, I see, he's in his own one. All right, and I wanted him going up there. All right, so yeah, he needs to go there. And then we'll just take one of these guys instead have him go to defend the capital. All right, excellent. Uh, so uh, these guys here will go ahead and train up, although it looks like one other guy is currently trained. Oh, he's in this one. Okay, uh, so we're gonna pull this guy out, put him into this army, have him defend here. We're actually gonna need to change some stuff up here. Uh, let's go and get these guys training. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, we're gonna change this this up just a little bit uh, because remember we do need to defend the coast now and we're never gonna play the damn game so sorry about that guys <laughs> the shit we gotta do uh, we have to defend the ports here because I think war should probably start this episode if it might be the end and then we need to defend that port as well so we'll have this guy here defending that port for us uh, oh damn I got the wrong army selected there we go I'm just incompetent guys all right so he's gonna defend that port we're going to have to bring a division from over here to defend that port there. Uh, and we don't really have, yeah, we don't have much here. So we're just going to have to take one of these guys, move him over there. Uh, we should probably have enough for, yeah, that's not going to be enough divisions. We do have two more coming over here though. Uh, so we'll probably just need to pull, I don't know, maybe one. 
All right, so that's good. We'll get them going over where they need to get to go to. Another thing we can do is go ahead and edit these guys. Yeah, let's go ahead and edit them, uh, make them a little bit better. Oh, bicycle battalions. I didn't know we had bicycle battalions. Uh, oh yeah, somebody said that in the comments. I, I didn't realize that the Dutch had bicycle battalions. Go ahead and change these guys up, make sure that they have the engineer company so they can entrench. Uh, and we could also pull from the recon companies if we wanted to, uh, and just like uh, not use them. But you know what, we'll go ahead and keep the recon companies there. I would love to give them something else here, but yeah, we just can't, we don't have the experience. So that's good, let's go ahead and save that. That's gonna hurt us on infantry equipment quite a bit. Uh, is there anything we can pull from? We could pull from, uh, we need the anti-tanks, Never mind. All right, so it's fine. Currently building up a civilian factory. Let's go ahead and build one more military factory, guys, after that. And then after that, I think we're gonna have to start working on fortifications. All right, so all the troops are getting where they need to get to. These guys are now gonna have to train, so let's throw them into that training army. I know I have to redo their positions, but that's okay. Uh, we should probably get, oh, wait a minute, finish a bunch of stuff. Metsco de continues to declare war. Uh, let's go ahead and get the, uh, What's it, excavation? Yeah, let's go and grab the excavation, guys. So we do still have troops kind of moving around here. Uh, these guys are the ones that are going over to there, and then we have these two coming over here. All right, so we're waiting on them to get here. We'll train them up, and then that'll be the, I think that's the 20, we'll have 25 divisions here at that point. Uh, and that's probably all we're gonna have, unless this this manpower gets a little bit better. I, I might go ahead and build a, uh, start building the unit, guys. I, we might not have the equipment, though. Oh yeah, we are hurting on infantry equipment, never mind. That's irrelevant. Uh, let's go and get these troops going into the training army. Get them training up. Uh, all these guys here are done. Oops, trying to select these guys. Yeah, they're all done training. So let's go ahead and get them put back in their positions and let's we'll do it this way. Make sure everybody's here. And then all three of these guys here. And then these, this guy will be right there. All right, excellent. All right, looking squared away. So this is basically what we're gonna have uh, for this this war here. Uh, the 23 and then these two here for 25 total. Uh, these guys are all going to their locations and Metsuko continues. Yeah, Metsuko just continues to uh, conquer territory over there with the Americans doing absolutely nothing. Uh, so so yeah, uh, I'm surprised that they, they, let me just take a look, see what the Americans are working on. They're working on the Manhattan Project right now, okay. Uh, not at all concerned about Mexico expanding their territory down there. Uh, so we now have to make a choice between assault or infiltration. Let's go down the infiltration route. Uh, I typically prefer this one if I'm using leg infantry and not really using motorized and stuff. Uh, because they both give the same amount of organization to leg infantry. This one, they both give 10. Uh, but you'll notice that you get your five organization right in the beginning here of this branch. And then you get another five right there. Uh, while on this one, you don't get the first bit of five until right there. And then the second one's down here. Uh, so. And another advantage for leg infantry is you get that 10% breakthrough, which uh, is not the case here for assault. Yeah, I don't think that gives any break. Oh, it gives the whole army breakthrough. Never mind. Uh, so that's that's one advantage, of course, uh, that one. But you'll notice a lot of these give stuff for you know tanks and, and motorized and mechanized. Uh, this one has two good bonuses here: the supply consumption reduction, really really nice for our war in Asia. And then the land night attack is fantastic. Plus 25%, that's a great one. I really like that one. So we're gonna go down this route, guys. I think that makes the most sense. Uh, so uh, we can make an adjustment here and we already know that we're gonna be doing limited conscription. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So that hopefully we can get some units built. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and try and build some units. Uh, did we, we can't make any adjustments here. We just have to wait to do that. All right, well, that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and build one anyway though. And we're gonna want to take these guys up at the top, have them deploy uh, here, and just build one for right now. We don't even have the equipment for them because we're really hurting on the infantry equipment, but at least we can train them, uh, train them up to that, that level. Uh, can we pull from anything? I mean, I guess we can pull from anti-tanks. Yeah, let's pull from anti-tanks and get it going towards infantry equipment because we really need more infantry equipment, guys. Uh, so we'll go ahead and Try and see if we can't fix the infantry equipment issues before the war begins, uh, obviously. It's probably gonna be in kinda soon, guys. I assume Germany will attack Poland, uh, and then from there, they might go after Denmark and Norway. It depends if Poland joins the French faction or not. Uh, we did finish up the lessons for war, excellent. So that right there gave us the, 
uh, army experience and two times land doctrine research bonuses. Next, we're going to go after the cave to the British uh, because, once again, we're just not going to be able to go down here because if we did, and, and it sucks because this has some great, great focuses that I'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, I'm really bummed out that we can't go down that route. Uh, we'll go with the cave to the British, and then we're going to go the unity through democracy and down the lead the minor democracies route. Uh, that's really the only way to do it. So we do bypass that one. I guess I could have did details so we could go straight through here, and then we're going to do unity through democracy. Uh, but, yeah, the real, the real bummer uh is that um if you if you go down the monarchy route there is this this chain of national focuses i'm trying to make sure we're not training anybody necessarily unnecessarily excuse me and these guys are still going over to here they actually need to join that training army yeah we're gonna go ahead and have all these guys train up that's fine all right um but yeah and you know what Let's go ahead and do something else before I start talking to you guys. I'll tell you all about that in a second. We need to go ahead and add a field marshal here uh, because that one of the field marshals give us a entrenchment bonus uh, or our only field marshal, excuse me. Uh, the Henry Winkleman, uh, who was you know the leader of the the Dutch forces uh, during the invasion, he's the one who you know signed the official capitulation of the Dutch actually, because uh, remember the the Dutch government under the Queen did go to Britain. Uh, so he has that defensive doctrine bonus, which is 30% max entrenchment. So we want to go ahead and take advantage of that. And plus, he's got a defense bonus as well, so that's super helpful. But yeah, this one here is going to be the most beneficial because that's going to allow us to start entrenching now. That's why I feel like we should get it. Uh, and he has another trait. Well, we're going to go with Charismatic, get that division recovery rate. That's going to be useful. And then make sure like all of the, the armies are, are under that, uh, under the field marshal. All right. Uh, so yeah, just try and keep an eye on these guys, make sure none of them are trading needlessly. Metsco continues to take territory. Uh, but yeah, what I was saying, guys, is that, um, and damn, we just keep getting shit done. Uh, so let me select something here, and is there, no, no, we're not even close to 1940. I guess we're going to go after support companies next? Yeah, let's go ahead and get the uh, Field Hospital 2s. Uh, super useful. Somebody has asked me why I like these so much. Uh, the trickle back, the proportion of losses in combat that can be saved and returned to the manpower pool. Super useful for a minor uh, power since manpower is your main limiting factor as a minor power. You never have enough manpower as a minor power, so that's uh, the most beneficial one. But of course, the experience loss makes it useful for even people with uh, manpower because uh, you lose less experience as you take casualties. So yeah, I really like that one. If you can't tell, uh, let me take a look at how our ships are doing here. I'm kind of curious when we'll get our first one, the 28th. Okay. And then we get this one. It's going to be a while. We might not even have them in time for the war. Actually, maybe we should take one away from the convoys. I know that we're going to need a lot of convoys though. So I feel like doing that might be a bad idea. Uh, but yeah, what I was saying, uh, is that, and if anything pops up, I'm just going to pause it and talk. Uh, so they have a focus that does allow you to support the Kaiser in Germany. But essentially what those focuses do is they result in, in troops leaving Germany, troops who are in support of the Kaiser, not in support of, of the uh, current regime. And they will, uh, you'll slowly get units spawned here. It's not a ton, it's a few, but of course anything helps uh, as the Dutch. And so you just get free divisions that spawn here. And in addition, the, the Germans will get a national spirit, which reduces their manpower game by a little bit. Once again, it's not a lot, but, you know, it's, it's something. It helps some, I suppose. Uh, and, you know, it's to represent, you know, Germans leaving uh, Germany to come to, to come to the Netherlands to, to support uh, the Kaiser. And then once you take any German territory, so if you take one German province, then then the Civil War starts. And it's not like the, the main Civil War where they get half of the country or anything like that. That would be super overpowered. Uh, but it just results in them getting any territory. They become your puppet temporarily. And any ter German territory you take goes to them. And, uh, you know, then, then once you defeat Germany, uh, then the Kaiser would return to power. But you, I think you, you are requested. I don't know if, if you have a choice. Uh, to then free Germany, uh, if I think you're you have to, but you might have a choice, and you could keep him as a puppet, but that could cause issues, I suppose. Uh, and then then the Kaiser is in control, uh, so it's kind of a really cool event chain that I, or a focus branch, I suppose, that I really wanted to go down. So it's such a bummer that we don't get to do the monarchy route, guys. I'm really uh, I'm really really bummed out by that. Uh, and where are the divisions unassigned? Oh, we have one extra division. All right, so we're gonna go and get them assigned here, and we might even put them on that line actually. Uh, unless we don't, oh, we don't have them all defended here. All right, so we're going to need to put this guy here. And then what we'll do is, let me just take this guy, and he'll go there. 
he's gonna go over there now. And then this guy can go over to here. Just make sure we have all these ports protected or as many of them as we can. We got two in the capital right now. Where are these troops at? All right, so they can go straight onto that line then. Oh, I should have grabbed both of them, my bad. Let's go in and get the other one, get him assigned as well. And most of these troops are almost done training, which is excellent. Uh, yeah, we're gonna try and take over this territory here. Uh, see if we can't get that knocked out. Um, so they do have at least one division defending here. That's a shame. Uh, he's defending the port right there. All right, well, we'll see if we can't wrap them up. I might actually go ahead and change up their positions where these guys are located because uh, we're going to want to try and grab uh, some of these these uh, provinces as quickly as we can. So what we'll do is we're going to have this guy go here, try and grab that province. And we can go ahead and have him take the railroads, I suppose. Take the railroads on over to there, and he'll try and take that. Uh, we're going to keep this guy here so that he can attack over that way. And then this guy can remain there as well. All right, so the rest of them are fine. I just want to move that one division. Because uh, remember, these guys are in uh, the British faction. So we will have to, to fight them. They do remain loyal to the British. So they are part of the Axis. Uh, so if, if we brought in our puppet, which we should have a choice. I don't think they'll declare war on them. I think we'll have a choice if we want to bring them in or not. And so if we do bring them in, uh, then we'll want to get all this territory conquered. I don't know if we'll be able to do an invasion of Singapore because we won't control the seas. But our navy might be able to do it. It's not impossible that our navy could uh, could control the, the seas over here. I could have had this plane the whole time. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I didn't realize that it wasn't. Uh, so we did get that military factory done. I thought we had already assigned them to do something else. We'll take a look at that here in a minute. Uh, we will assign this to the infantry equipment since that's what we're hurting on the most. Uh, definitely need to get get that built out. Not looking good. Uh, the civilian factories. Uh, maybe I did just have the one doing it. All right. So, oh, yeah, that's right. We had a civilian factory building and then a military factory. Got it. So I want to go ahead and start working on fortifications here soon. Can we get another? I wonder if we can get another one of these done. When is this done? Oh, that's going to be a while. Yeah, that's going to be a long time, guys. I don't know if we can get that done in time. Uh, and Because I don't know when the war is going to start. We haven't gotten, they haven't been working on it just yet. So we do have a bit of time. Uh, still have some time. You know what? I kind of want to get one more built. And then we'll do the fortifications. The fortifications are fairly quick. For the most part, they're, they're much quicker anyway. Uh, so, you know what, let's go ahead and do one more, guys. Uh, one more military factory, and then that's it. That's all we're going to do. We get that in November, November 26th. And hopefully we can get it uh, done before the war starts. Uh, I imagine so. Yeah, I think so, because we haven't gotten the notification yet about them doing... Uh, well, they can't. They can't do it yet. They still have to declare war on Poland. Uh, so they'll declare war on Poland, and then after the war against Poland, they'll, they'll go to war with us. Uh, or with the fr uh, French first. They have to be at the war with the French, I think, before they actually start... Uh, working on that. Uh, we can go ahead and change this guy's colors. Let's go ahead and make them... Oh, let's make them orange. Yeah. Uh, somebody wanted an orange one. We'll do an orange one, guys. Uh, and we will do a star. All right. Uh, so that's what color they will be. All right. So we still got guys training over here. We got nine more divisions that we need to get finished training. Uh, make sure that all these guys are fully trained. They are. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, so, yeah, the war might not start this episode. If it does, it's going to be at the very end, but we'll be really, really close to the war starting, I think. Uh, so we did finish up, when did we finish up? The advanced machine tools, that's what it said? I think so. I wasn't really paying attention. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get, uh, we're not close enough to 1939 just yet. Let's go ahead and do the engineer companies for that entrenchment bonus. Uh, you know, that uh, plus two entrenchment bonus would be helpful to have. Try and get our troops entrenched as possible uh, so that... Uh, and there we go. We got unity through democracy. Excellent. Uh, so let's go ahead and continue down this branch here. Uh, we're going to get the lead the minor democracies next. This does give us political power and removes the aloof nu neutrality uh, national spirit. Uh, we'll take a look at that in a second, see exactly what that one does. I just think that that doesn't let us do certain things. Uh, I believe it is. Yeah. Just can't, you know, join factions, send volunteers, guarantee tension. You have to have the role tension a bit higher uh, to do those. Yeah, I feel like it's it's work that's like kicking my ass in regards to uh, uh, my my voice. Partly, I don't I don't drink enough water while I'm at work. I know that that's an issue. Uh, you know, because I'm walking around busy and stuff, and I never drink enough water. Uh, let's get all these guys placed. And where's the last one? Oh, he's there as well. All right, so a lot of these guys are done training. Excellent. We do have a bit of experience to make some adjustments. Maybe we should do that. Uh, like add in. Could add the support artillery, uh, but that could cause some our, our gun problems. I, I don't see what else we'd add here other than supply, uh, which we don't have that tech yet. Uh, we could also do the anti-air, but we haven't built any of those. And that does have some some good bonuses, plus it would make it so that they're... Uh, and we're not going to have air support, 
Maybe we should do anti-air this time, guys. I almost never do anti-air. That could be super useful for us. You know what? I think we're going to actually add anti-air this time. I never do it. Yeah, let's do it, guys. And th that also gives a heart attack as well. Uh, you'll see that our heart attack is going up by a little bit. Uh, of course, we got higher defense, higher breakthrough. Uh, yeah, you know what, guys? Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and add in the, uh, the anti-air for once. I do have to build those, obviously. We're going to have to build a lot of those, in fact. This could put, cause some problems, <laughs> us not having them. Uh, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and save that. I think it's going to be useful uh, for our, our, uh, our army. Uh, so what we're going to want to do is go ahead and get the anti-air build now. We might actually have some anti-air. Maybe a few. Uh, let's go ahead and put them underneath the anti-tanks. I don't want to get rid of production here because, yeah, we have the full bonus here. But good God, like we got, and yeah, we're stacked up on that right now. Uh, and I don't really like having a factory going towards that. You know, guys, let's just delete this for right now. We're stacked up on that. I hate that we're losing the efficiency there, but we absolutely need to do that. Uh, so we're going to need another another civilian factory going towards steel now doing that, though. So that's kind of costly. A little bit unfortunate. Uh, so taking a look here. Yeah, still got troop training up. Uh, so, so a lot of people think that we're doomed. Uh, I've heard a lot of like doomsayers. Oh, these guys are done training. Excellent. You know, saying that we don't have a chance. Uh, we're gonna have them defend there, and then we're gonna have this guy go over to here. So we'll have two in each of those ports. And you know what else I'm gonna do, guys? I'm gonna try and help the the Belgium uh, Belgians out here because if we don't defend that, one thing I didn't realize that then that opens up. They now have to go from just defending one province to having to defend four which could really impact uh, the Belgian troops here. So we're gonna try and defend it. If it turns out to be too costly, then we'll pull them back. And I do wanna make sure that we have like our best, yeah, we might have to kind of rearrange some of these. Yeah, I don't like the way this looks. Not at all. On all of our divisions do need to train as well. Let's go ahead and take them, put them into this army here. And that will allow me to kind of remove them around too once they finish up training. Shouldn't take them too long to get trained up. Yeah, because they already have all their manpower. There we go. Excellent. So this will allow me to figure out exactly where all my armies are and make sure that we, we assign them, you know, based on where, where we want them. Uh, so we have one there, one there, and the other one needs to be here. So what we'll do, move these guys here, put this guy on this line, and then have him move over there. All right, so he'll go that way. Uh, and then these two here can stay where they're at. And this guy can stay here, though. In fact, I think we are going to switch him up a little bit. Uh, he will go over to here, and then one of these guys will go here. And then uh, the rest of these guys are fine with that. There we go. Excellent. So we can get the 25 because we have this guy here. That's what I was thinking. And then plus, remember, we're currently building uh, a division as well, uh, though he doesn't have any equipment, so he's not really actually building. Uh, so let's go ahead and get... Yeah, we're done here. And... I think we are done here as well. We could get the logistic company, but I already decided to put anti-air there, so we don't need that. Recon, reconnaissance is, is useful, but it's not, I don't know that it's worth the tech, guys. I think I'd prefer, if we have an open slot, which it looks like we do, I don't think there's anything else to get right now, I'd prefer to spend it on, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Yeah, I think we're gonna spend it on our Navy, guys. Let's go ahead and get something here, uh, like torpedoes would be super useful. Yeah, let's get the torpedo launchers. Uh, that would help both our cruisers and our, our submarines as we build them out. Uh, just a bummer that we're not getting that one submarine built for a while. We won't be able to, like, modify them or anything either. Yeah, it's a shame. So we probably won't get the cruisers on on anything for a while. Oh, we never take, took a look to see what's going on in China. Oh, look at that. All right, so China is, is almost conquered. Japan's doing very nicely against them. All right, good to know. Very good to know. Uh, let's see how we're doing on getting these guys trained up over here. And got a little bit more time, and we can modify our government. I don't know when the war's going to start, so I'm, I'm, I really want to almost wait for war economy, but we need those civilian factories now. Yeah, it feels like we have to have to change up here, guys. And plus, we're constructing extremely slow as well. Yeah, we're going to have to change over to partial mobilization, which is a bummer because that's like a waste of 150 political power because we're going to have to change the war economy once the war starts. Watch the fucking war end up. Watch the Germans start working on starting a war right after I do that. You already know this. What's going to happen? All right, so we did partial mobilization. Uh, that's going to give us, uh, you know, we have another military factory done as well. Uh, since we no longer need to, it doesn't take us long, as long to build military factories. So I think that resulted in us finishing, or maybe not. 
Hmm. Yeah, not entirely sure what happened there. Uh, so let's put this into... Let's try and get the infantry equipment built out. I think that'd be for the best. Yeah, definitely. Just looking at other stuff here. We're pretty solid on just about everything right now. Did we change up these guys? Fully? Uh, we could change them up again. Might as well, right? Yeah, let's go ahead and give them some more stuff. Make them a little bit better. Like, uh, support artillery. Let's do that. Uh, I think that this will all come from our, um, you know, from, from our equipment. I'm pretty sure it all does. Uh, yeah, we supply the equipment. They just supply the manpower even for those one divisions. So, I don't want to do anything that we're short on equipment. We could do field hospitals as well. But I don't really care about their manpower that much, honestly. You know what, guys? We will go ahead and do the field hospitals. It's fine. All right, so that's what they're going to look like, guys. Uh, that We can deploy these guys, so let's go ahead and do that now. Let's add another unit there and then deploy them. And then that'll give us eight divisions over here. Excellent. And where did the two go that were there? Where are all these fucking... Oh, they all moved over to here. Why? All right, I'm going to have to fix that. Shit. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they all moved over to there. Like, I didn't want you guys to move. That's, that's, it's so frustrating why the AI just does that now. Like, I need you to defend the fucking porch, you guys. Jesus Christ. All right, so... Yeah, they're automatically going to that, that, that army. I don't want them in there. And there's no way to, like, just have... Fuck shit, other than using the damn fallback lines. Like, why did Paradox change that? It basically makes it so you have to have... For just one little order, you have to... So we can't even have a line here, essentially. That's what this results in, is we can't have a line. Because Paradox decided to change that. That makes no sense. And it's super fucking frustrating. <sighs> All right, guys. Yeah, that is, is really frustrating that they decided to change that. And there's no reason for it either. Like, I don't, I don't understand why they would do that. Like, let me control my division. I'll decide where my divisions go, Paradox. I'll decide. Not you. Me. Uh, I, yeah, I just I don't like that they, they did that. So, basically, you have to have an army for every single little task. Uh... An individual army for every little tiny task is there any other there's a port right there i don't think they're gonna do naval invasions here guys this guy can actually stay here all right so he'll stay right there with these three divisions here so we'll have four divisions over here and i want to say that should be enough i could be wrong though the panay incident american and british gunboats were attacked by japanese aircraft in separate actions day while evacuating western civilians from the front line in the war between japan and china Despite being clearly marked as an American vessel, the USS Panay was hit by two bombs and sunk, with three Americans and one Italian citizen killed and others wounded in a separate attack on HMS Ladybird, one British sailor was killed. Both the American and British governments issued strong protest. The incident highlights the increasing tensions between the three most foremost naval, uh, naval powers. If I can read. Alright, I don't think I've seen that event before. Yeah, I just wish they hadn't changed that, where before, you know, they only went on to a line if you assigned them on a line. Tensions running high between the United States and Japan. All right, yeah, I've never seen those events before. That's interesting. What is the United States currently working on? I, I really am curious on when they're going to join the conflict. We did knock out field hospitals. Excellent. Let's go ahead and uh, get something else done. Uh, we're close enough to 1940. I'm going to go ahead and start working on 1940 techs, guys. Let's go and get support weapons, get that defense. Um, I'm surprised that nothing's really happened with Germany just yet uh, on them uh, declaring Poland, uh, declaring war on Poland. Sometimes it does take them a little while, though. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. And then also with the the situation with Germany, with uh, Britain being different, I don't know if that's affecting things uh, at all. Uh, but yeah, I'm surprised they're not not working on that yet. Uh, or I guess we, we we can take a look and see what they're working on here in a second. We did finish that military factory. We should probably go ahead and put in support equipment because we're once again short on that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and sign that to there. I don't think I'm going to trade another civilian factory away right now uh, because we need to start building these fortifications over here, guys. Uh, so... Let me turn these WSD keys on. I didn't realize they were off. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and, and uh, get the land forts, I think, uh, up along the line. We need to get coastal forts as well, though. Rotterdam has two, or three, excuse me, and there's three here as well, but we need some right there. Uh, that's pretty important. Uh, so we want to get coastal forts there, but I think getting the land forts might be uh, something we want to do first. Uh, so let's build two right there. And then we'll do the, the coastal forts. I'm trying to get up to like three at the very least. And then we'll want to get like five in both of these. And then like, uh, yeah, probably f at least maybe five in, in all of those uh, ones. Uh, all the coastal. 
Uh, so wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. I was looking at the wrong one. These are land forts. My bad. I'm an idiot. Uh, we don't have any coastal forts. Okay. Um, so you know what? I don't know if it's worth it building the coastal forts in there. If they attack there, then that's fine. Uh, let's build them here though. This is, or is it here? It's actually here that we want the coastal forts. Uh, so let's get up to three there and uh, make sure that these, these ports are protected. So that's what we'll work on for right now on fortifications. Uh, try and get those knocked out. And uh, I guess we can see what Germany's working on. Treaty with the USSR for Germany. Uh, France is working on Polish guarantee. Oh, so if Germany does declare war on Poland, then then France and Poland would end up in the, in the war together. So that would be a three-front war. Uh, and Italy just declared war on Yugoslavia. All right, so Italy is now going to be at war with France. Oh, shit. All right, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, yeah, because remember, uh, Yugoslavia is in the... Uh, is in the same faction as the French. So now they're gonna be at war together. So Italy is gonna have a two-front war here. I was gonna say Germany will have a three-front war once they are at war with France uh, because they're gonna have to fight uh, here in Yugoslavia against Yugoslavia. That might now change. Now Italy's gonna be you know pushing into there. Uh, they're gonna have the French one and then they're gonna have the Polish front as well. Uh, so we'll have to take a look, see what they do next. And uh, they're about halfway through theirs. So we're kind of behind on, on ours. As you can see, we're behind where the AI is right now. Uh, on our national focuses. Oh, that might also be affected by the fact that we had a bunch of 35 day ones. Uh, but anyways, uh, we, I don't think that started the faction, did it? I don't know. Let's take a look. No, that's not, that's not the one that starts the faction. That gets political power and then starts pushing us towards democracy and remo removes that neutrality one. This was the one that pushed us towards democracy. Okay. Uh, so essentially it gives an opinion boost. All right, uh, so we can form the Benelux. I think we should probably do that one first uh, because uh, if you can't do this, if Belgium, Luxembourg, or Netherlands are in a faction, um, so, or excuse me, if Belgium and Luxembourg are in a faction. So if they were to join a faction, because for instance, they were declared war on, then we wouldn't be able to do it. So let's do this one first. I think that's imperative. We get that one knocked out. Uh, let's go ahead and modify our government as well. Uh, we already changed to partial. We already changed conscription as well. You know what I think we should probably start working on, guys? Is maybe trying to get that war support up some if we can. Yeah, because I don't think we really have anything here that we absolutely need. The ship designer, I suppose, would be nice because we are getting the occasional naval tech. Uh, but you know what? Let's go ahead and take a look and see if there's anything we can do for... No, there's not. There's nothing we can do here. Never mind. Take that back. Uh, we could do one of these ones. This does gain uh, war support as well, though it does cost political power, though. Uh, but that'd be one way to get our war support up. Uh, but maybe we should do these ones. I think we had decided that there's nothing that we could get from them, though. I mean, we could try taking it, seeing if we can't get the infantry equipment. Yeah, this is a bunch of equipment. Maybe France will give us some stuff. It's not impossible. Uh, maybe we'll take... Yeah, we're going to try one of these guys. I think that the best one to get would be the uh, equipment one, since that's what we're hurting on. This gives us targeted bonus to attack and defense against their aggressors for... Okay. Yeah, we don't want to do that one. I mean, that one is useful, but I think we should get the equipment because that's what we're hurting on. I'll see if they'll give it to us, and it's the cheapest one. If they won't give us this one, then they're not going to give us the other ones. That's the way I'm looking at it. So let's try and do it. Let's see if they're willing to give us some equipment. That would be really nice if we could knock those out. We already know Germany and, and Britain aren't going to give us shit. Uh, we can't go ahead and start this new army over here. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to go ahead and have them get a front here and go ahead and get an offensive line as well. Uh, so we'll have one division over here doing that. Uh, we'll go ahead and give... I don't think we're going to have a commander for them, guys. Yeah, we, I don't know. We could always hire one, I suppose. I mean, we have the political power. You know what? Let's do that. Let's get a new commander. We're going to need one anyway. Uh, so he's reckless and politically connected. Okay. Uh, so we're going to give them the new commander. And then uh, as these guys finish up training, we'll add them to it. And we'll have three divisions to try and accomplish that. I don't know if the, it'll be enough or not, guys. I suppose we'll find out. So my goal here is to get to the end of the year. And, oh, France agreed. France has sent us shipment equipment to aid our remilitarization. They only agreed to give us the support equipment, though. So we didn't get any of the other stuff that we needed. Oh, that's a shame. But, I mean, it's something. Yeah, support equipment. Sure, I'll take that. Uh, I guess, yeah, that's helpful. All right, uh, so that kind of we no longer have the needs for the support equipment. Maybe I should go ahead and and pull one back then and put it into the uh, the anti-air instead. And in general, fall ill. I don't know if that affect our. No, it didn't affect resources at all. Yeah, but the goal here is to get to the end of the year. And we also knocked out infantry offensive. 
Uh, let's go ahead and go down armored operations, even if this one's not really all that useful to us. Since we don't have any armored, we do want to continue going down that, that branch. Try and get all those knocked out. And as I said, my goal for the episode was to get to uh, the uh, get to, to 1941 at the, or excuse me, 1940. Take a little bit longer to get to 1941. We got the improved ship torpedo launchers. Excellent. Uh, let's go ahead and get. Oh, what do we want to get next? Do we, no, we're, we're working on 1940 techs. Let's go ahead and do the improved infantry equipment. Trying to get all those bonuses. We'll take a look what Germany's doing. They're not done with their treaty with the USSR yet. Still going Polish guarantee here. A motorized army there. Okay. Um. And we can now do something here. And I don't think... Yeah, I almost want to go ahead and see if they'll do any of those other decisions. Let's just take a look. You can keep requesting equipment here. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Though I doubt... Uh, yeah, I doubt they'll do another one. Oh, okay. They get the event. And then they pick one thing to give to us. Okay, I thought they'd give us all three. No, they only give you one. Either infantry equipment, support equipment, or towed artillery. All right, so we could keep asking for equipment, uh, which would be useful since we have manpower now, but we don't have the equipment to build divisions. So, yeah, maybe we want to do that. What do these other ones do since now we know that they're willing to do it? Uh, so this one, uh, division defense on core territory, that's only 150 days after being attacked. So is that not apply until after we're attacked? Not entirely sure how that works. Looking here, exchange intelligence. We'll receive a targeted bonus to attack. So France receives it. We will receive a targeted bonus. So we both get it. Okay, interesting. And then this gives us that research bonus. You know what? Let's uh, let's go and work on getting our war support up. I think that would probably be the most, most useful thing for us right now because I'm a little bit worried about the surrender limit. Uh, the surrender limit is, you know, obviously if they, they could just take a few key cities here at the point, this point, cause it's negative and yeah, it's like sitting at negative 10%. So they wouldn't even have to take all Holland. I don't think to get us to capitulate. Uh, so I'm a little bit worried about that. All right. We got engineered companies. I think we're done over here for right now. Let's go ahead and keep on working on 1939 text guys. Uh, do we need, yeah, we don't need anything here. Yeah, we're good to go here. We got all the 1939 text there already. Uh, or 1940 text, excuse me, that's what I meant to say. Uh, we could go in and get the encryption and decryption, uh, but I instead want to go ahead and start getting the, the stuff here, the artillery and the anti-tanks and all that kind of good stuff first. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll get the artillery one first, and then we'll do the anti-tanks. Let's take a look at training. We do have one division done uh, over here, so we do have to throw them into this army again, and it just sucks that I can't have a, a front man. I'm, I'm like super bummed out by that. We could, of course, put... I guess what we could do is have them in their own army for right now. And as long as we're not being naval invade and we're not being invaded navally, it won't cause an issue. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do, guys. All right, that works, I suppose. I just hate that they, they changed it. It's kind of frustrating. As you guys can probably tell, I'm a little bit frustrated. So we're in January. This is where I wanted to get, but I want to see what Germany does next. Oh, Italy is. Oh, okay, I thought they were pushing into France. I was about to say, oh, no. But they're definitely pushing into Yugoslavia. All right, so that's interesting that that happened. Um, they're working on this now. Okay. Uh, I don't know when the hell they're going to go after Poland. They're taking their sweet-ass time. Uh, looking at France, they're doing this one. I don't remember what that one is. I want to say that's a tank one, right? Yeah, it's a tank one. Uh, and one of the China warlords has capitulated. And okay, the British are bringing the Dominions back into the fold. All right, so that's going to start some conflict, guys. So yeah, Germany has been a little bit slower attacking Poland than typical. I, I'm going to take a wild guess that has something to do with Britain. I, I recall, and I might be wrong here, last uh, last campaign, they were a little bit slower on the war as well. Or something ended up forcing the war, actually. I don't recall shit, apparently. Yeah, look at how fast Yugoslavia collapsed. Good God. Yeah, they collapsed really quick. We got support weapons knocked out. Excellent. We could go ahead and go to mechanize. We're not going to use those, though, so no no use on it. We don't have any marines yet, so we're not going to go for those just yet. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and go with the anti-tanks next. Yeah, let's get the anti-tanks. It's only 68 days as well. Uh, we can modify our government again if we wanted to. Once again, there's not really a whole lot to get here. I mean, I could go with the chief of navy, uh, but you know, it gets a screen attack. It's a screen defense, so that does help. Or we could go with the ship designer. So that we can get research those naval techs a little bit faster. Aren't we researching a naval tech? Just take a look here. We actually are not researching naval techs right now. You know what, guys? We'll go ahead and get the chief of navy, and get that screen attack, screen defense up. I mean, the capital ships don't have a lot of those. I mean, it, it's helpful, I suppose. Uh, we'll go ahead and get that, 
And then after that, I think we're done here for right now. Yeah, I think we'll be done after that. I don't see us getting any of these. And instead, we're going to go ahead and just continue working on these decisions that cost political power. We did get the form, the Benelux. Excellent. Uh, so I don't know what exactly that ended up doing. Uh, do we need... Yeah, we do have to go all the way down here. All right, so this is the, the faction. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the responsibility for our own defense next so that we can keep moving down that branch. So what exactly did that do? Did that give us a new decision? For uh, Here's the Realized European Union. Uh, so Realized European Union, what exactly do we have to do to do it? Uh, we have to control Luxembourg. Okay, we have to control the Belgian... Oh, okay. Yeah, that. so that is something for after the war, apparently. Alright, so yeah, not going to be doing that. Let me just take a look here. And yeah, if you guys did want to see what we need here. Because uh, I actually was a little bit wrong on this one. On the water lines, I said that we had to control this. We actually don't have to control these provinces uh, here. We only need to control all the provinces in Holland for 14 days, not seven. I originally said seven, so I was completely wrong on that. It's 14 days. As long as we hold that, we're good to go. Uh, and then we can we can initiate that. Uh, so let's take a look at, at what we can do here. Because uh, I, I could have swore that unlocked some kind of decision, but I'm not seeing anything. Oh, here it is. Oh, it's 300 political power. Good God, that's expensive. All right, and we have to be in a faction with them, which I don't think we're in. A oh, we are in the faction. Oh, okay, the faction has started. There we go. So we got the Benelux faction. It did do that. That's what I thought. So yeah, we are all in a faction together now. All right, so that's really, really good. Uh, so now all three of us, if anybody attacks, attacks any one of these, the low countries, then uh, they'll be fighting us all. Uh, so that's that's great news. Uh, so we got our faction formed, guys. I'd really like to, to annex them, um, but once again, that does take uh, 300 political power. It looks like we could do it, though. They do have to approve of it, though. Yeah, it looks like they have to approve it. That would be awesome if we get that done. 300 political power, that's going to take us a while, though. Yeah, that's going to take us a long time to get that done. We'll see if we can, though. Uh, so hopefully they don't fall. Uh, we got to hold that province so they don't. Let's just go ahead and... Oh, what happened? Oh, wait. This is them joining. And they did accept. All right. That's what I was expecting. I was like, where the hell is the event? Uh, so we'll go ahead and read this. Under the leadership of the Dutch government, a new alliance comprised of the various low countries has formed. Their leaders have voiced the hope that this fledging alliance will remain neutral in the face of growing world crisis and that other nations may eventually join it to bolster the strength of this block of neutrality and rationality in the face of the insanity that is gripping the world at present. We welcome all who are tired of the bickering major powers. Yeah, I love this. I love that we were able to get this done. Uh, we do have guys that are done here. So let's go and throw them onto that front. And I should have checked who the other guy was. Is he on this front as well? He is. All right. So we have our three divisions here done and doing their thing. The last division is over here. He's going to be uh, guarding the, the capital province over here, which I think is key. Making sure that we keep control of that. Uh, we should probably take a look. Oh, we can deploy this guy. Okay, so let's go and deploy him now. Let's go and build another one. We could actually build a few. They have infantry equipment. Look at all the equipment they got. Awesome. All right, so let's go and deploy him. Yeah, so we're going to have more troops over here to help in the conquest. I almost want to go ahead and send another one over to Europe. You know what? We are going to send another one to Europe, guys. I think uh, we have enough over here uh, as of right now. And plus, we have those other ones uh, training up. So let's go and send these guys now. Get them going over here. We'll have them join this, this army for as soon as they finish. And it looks like this guy's done as well. All right, so let's go and put him into that army. Okay, looking pretty good, guys. I'm very happy with the way things are going. Uh, we also have this guy. Um, he's going to be deploying as soon as he's done. We'll just deploy him now, though. And we'll take a look. Yeah, we're still really hurting on infantry equipment. Let's go and deploy this guy. Get him going into the training army here. All right, excellent. Things are looking good. Uh, this doesn't have a port, does it? I don't think it does. Oh, it does. We have to defend that. I was trying to see if we had a port here. We did not. I don't know why I got confused. I think I looked at that one on accident. I clicked on that one. That one has a port. Okay, so yeah, we don't have to defend any of these. However, I'm a little bit worried that the uh, Belgium won't defend their ports. That's uh, something to be concerned about. Hopefully they do, because uh, that could cause problems for us. Uh, so uh, we do have a civilian factory. We did finish up these uh, the forts. We actually have more time, because now they're doing something with the Russians right now. Uh, so they still haven't attacked uh, Poland just yet. So we do have time. Um, I, I, I want to get these forts finished, though, uh, the, the, all the fortifications built up. But since we do have so much time... What we could do, we already built up there. Uh, we do have to build up here as well. Uh, and we should probably build there too. We could build the fortifications along here. Remember, how long fortifications take is how big they are. So we could defend here, and these shouldn't take very long. Yeah, it's only a couple weeks. 
to get um, you know level one forts done. And, th and then maybe we can even hold this province because remember if we hold this whole state, then we are able to keep those civilian factories. And that's the main thing I'm worried about. Let's build them. And remember that causes casualties for the Germans too. Maybe we'll be able to hold this. I mean, it's not really the goal. I, I plan to probably evacuate and push back over to here, but yeah, it would be nice if we could hold it. We'll have to see. We'll see what happens there, guys. And Yugoslavia has capitulated. The Italians were able to conquer that. Now they just need to fight France. France is going to have two fronts here. That's really going to mess them up pretty bad. Uh, we've got the artillery done. Uh, excellent. Uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and continue down the anti-air attack. I'm going to get, get all those, those techs knocked out since we have all of them in our units now. Prevalent. And yeah, this is just going to be an extra long episode, guys. What I'm going to do is go ahead and get through, have it so that we did exactly one year. Uh, and, and this is also to help apologize for the fact that, the, that we didn't have a video the other day. Uh, or, you know, on Monday, uh, unfortunately. Could build more troops up. We have the equipment. Let's do one more. I don't want to get where we're too short on equipment, guys, because uh, that would cause some problems. Uh, these guys can now deploy. Let's go ahead and build out one more. Deploy all these guys. And yes, they did. Uh... They did sign a non-aggression uh, pact. Got a fucking name of it slipped my mind there. So um, we do have these divisions here. We need to go ahead and train them though. So it's going to get them all training up, and then maybe we'll throw some over there. Uh, what we could do, in fact, because these guys are all trained up, let's go just go ahead and sign both of these over there now. So we'll have even more divisions uh, to launch this attack to try and get North Borneo taken. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. All right, wasn't I wasn't sure if we'd get that done or not. Could also send some of these divisions to Europe. In fact, we probably should. We have 25 there now. We can control up to 30. Uh, we're building a few of our own as well. So let's just send one more division then. Just one more division over to there. Uh, we could also send a division over to here. In fact, you know what? That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that we're, uh, we have uh, you know something over here uh, to defend. Because that's where our, uh, you know, obviously that's where uh, our oil is. So that'd probably be good. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take one and assign him over here as well. And then one going to uh, help us out in Europe. All right, awesome. Just getting more troops going out there. Because, yeah, we don't need that many troops over there. Uh, we do have civilian factories open. We already built the... Uh, that's awesome. We got the land forts finished. Let's just go up to level twos here. I think that's probably all we'll do. Uh, and, you know, we'll build right there as well. In fact, I want that one done first. And, yeah, these shouldn't take too long. Yeah, it's about two weeks now. And I think that's kind of the limit. I think that's all we can really afford to do. Uh, taking a look at what they're working on now. Danziger War, there we go. And Romania just joined the Axis, too. Oh, and there's a civil war here. All right, so if they end up joining anybody, then that would start the conflict. All right, so uh, Germany is now working on Danziger War, finally. Took them long enough. Uh, these guys are doing encouraging colonial elite. France is doing army reforms. Poland's doing air innovations. And the Soviet Union is doing transformation of nature. Italy's working on bomber effort. All right, so... Remember, the French are guaranteeing Poland, uh, so uh, that would result in the French being at war with Germany. So the French and the Polish. Now the Germans only have to worry about two fronts since you know Yugoslavia is gone, uh, and the French have to worry about the Italian front. So yeah, this is it's it's pretty dire for France right now. We got the improved anti tanks. Uh, I want to say we're done over there, and we got the the infantry equipment as well. Yeah, I think we're we're pretty much squared away. That's what it looks like. Yeah, we got everything we need. So, now that we got all those knocked out, uh, I guess we can keep on working on naval techs. Uh, or we could start working on, you know, naval doctrines as an option as well. But we need so many naval techs. I don't think that'd be for, for the best. I don't see us building planes. You know what? We need both decryption and encryption. We should probably get those next then. Let me just see if there's anything else that we can get. Yeah, I think that's probably what we should get. Let's get encryption. And we'll get decryption. Because remember, we were ahead of everybody on those. Uh, because we did get the uh, research bonus a little bit quicker. All right, guys, so we are just about where I want to end this here. Uh, so we did get the responsibility for our own defense, which gave us uh, a little bit more war support. Uh, and then, of course, we got a higher recruitable population, higher factory output, and higher construction speed. So all great things there. Uh, next, we're going to go with the Lessons from the Low Countries, which grants division defense on core territory plus 10%, uh, plus 10 max entrenchment, and land con fort construction speed is going to be faster. Uh, so we'll be able to build those forts even quicker. Excellent. Uh, so, yeah, this, is, this one's super useful. Yeah, I like that one. All right, so let's just take a look at how we're doing on getting these forts built up. I think we'll probably wait to, to build any further. You know what? Let's wait until we get that modifier. They're not at war with us yet. 
So we'd be able to build these even quicker. Let's just finish the one here and then we'll wait to get the other ones. Uh, and then what we'll do is go ahead and build a military factory. Uh, I think that building one here would be really useful. Yeah, and we can build pretty quick now as well with the military factories. We have that modifier. All right, so we'll get one more military factory. I think that'd be uh, super useful for the war. And Soviet Union did just declare war on Lithuania. So World War II is definitely broken out, guys, uh, even if Germany's not yet involved. Uh, you know, with the Italians at war with the French, you know, Soviets doing their damn thing. Of course, Japanese uh, have knocked out majority of China. They got about half of China left uh, to finish up on. We do have outdated equipment, the towed anti-tanks that we need to upgrade. Let's go and get those out there. And I do want to take a look at how we're doing on infantry equipment now. All right, infantry equipment's a little bit better. So let's go ahead and just pull back on that just a bit so that we can get built up to, how are we doing everything else? Yeah, get the support equipment built up, guys. I feel like that's what we need the most. Uh, how are we doing on the motorized? Yeah, we are going to have to get another motorized out there. So that's what we'll do with that extra one that we're building. And then we'll go to the, towards the motorized. Okay, so that was quick. Lithuania knocked out of the conflict. We did get our anti-air upgrade. Let's go and go with the last one here. All right. So yeah, we didn't get, even though we had an extra long episode here, we didn't get into the conflict. I said that we would, but that's because Germany did not go down the Polish route like I thought they would have. I mean, I guess it's, it's a good thing. I mean, if we're being honest, that because we weren't, we obviously weren't ready yet. Uh, where do we need these guys? Um, we have two here. I feel like probably putting another one on this line would be wise. Yeah, let's do another one over there. Okay, uh, so that we try and get three all the way across. Although, this guy's going to have to go. I hope that that's enough. Two divisions in each port. I don't really know. Uh, we did get the armored uh, operations. Excellent. Let's go down the next one, which is supply consumption. Uh, we also need to get... Um, we need to take a look at our troops that are training up. All right, so we can go ahead and deploy this guy. And I, I'm a little bit hesitant to to send you know too much, too much of our manpower into new units. Because remember, we are going to need manpower. Uh, so I want to keep at least like a hundred something thousand. Let's go and add units here. Let's deploy them. And we can deploy these guys as well. Poland did decide to cede Danzig. So the war is going to take even longer to start. <laughs> oh, oh, they're going for it now. There it is. There's the justification, guys. All right, so we have it. Uh, so they, since they no longer need to attack Poland... Uh, they're instead going to be attacking us. They're going to do around the Maginot line here. Uh, we do have these two divisions here, so let's get them training. Uh, so finally, finally we're getting it, guys. So 70 days away, that's the time that we have. So that means the war would start in, oh, it's at the end of May here. So that'd be in August. Yeah, that'd be sometime in like mid-August. Uh, early, mid-August is when the war would start. Uh, so taking a look at how long this is going to take. This will be in June, so then we'll switch to prioritize, solely prioritize fortifications. Uh, we do have uh, these divisions here that need to train. And uh, no divisions that are currently done training just yet. And then we're gonna want to take a look here. And I'm it's curious that they're going around the, the uh, uh, Maginot Line when they haven't even, they're not even at war with France just yet. Uh, but they'll have the focuses so they can declare war on us. They might even try and wrap us up before they attack uh, the French. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get us to uh, where we finish up our our, our uh, military factory. I know I keep pushing back when I'm going to end this. And then we're going to save our political power, guys. I'm not going to do anything else over here for right now. And let's take some decisions. Oh, yes, we have to save it till we get 300 if we want to annex them. All right, so that's what we'll do. We'll just be saving until we get to 300. We are now at 50% war support, so that's awesome. Uh, that means we're not getting any penalties. Not getting any benefits either, uh, but, you know, that's key. And this is going to mess me up the whole time. I could just make it disappear, I suppose. All right, so we're almost done, 19th of June. And that'll be at 1 in the morning. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and get some fortifications built. Uh, so, let's see. We could build all along here a bit more. Probably should. Let's get it up to level 2s. I want to see how long those take. Oh, we get these really, really quick. All right, so let's build level twos across here. Get a level three there. And then probably build up to level five there. Coastal forts, we might build a bit more coastal forts here as well. Let's do, we'll just leave this as is for right now and we'll see how, how we're looking. 
uh, when we finish that up. So that is the end of our extra long episode, guys. I hope that you did enjoy it. Uh, so next episode, you can see that they're they're here, you know, about a month away uh, from getting their focuses against us. If they declare war on any of us here, then that does result in us all uh, going to war. Uh, one benefit of us becoming one faction is now Luxembourg is now properly defended, uh, which is awesome because usually Luxembourg falls really, really quickly. Uh, so uh, the Belgian troops here are defending there. I'm surprised they haven't moved any of their troops into our front. We'll have to see what happens here. I don't think they're going to protect the coast enough. Might need to bring divisions over there to help them with that. We do. We are stacked on Navy experience. That's a bit of a problem. I don't think we have anything to uh, give to anybody. Did we ever finish? We did finish the torpedoes, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We could always uh, change up our uh, our ships here. Uh, I know I said that it was going to start this this episode, but it didn't. It will definitely be this one. As you can see, these guys are just about done. Uh, of course, they still have to declare war on us, but I don't see why they want it. They're not at war with anybody right now, so there's no reason for them not to. I imagine Poland's like not going to join a faction now or, or not get involved in the war until much later uh, because of that. Uh, and I don't know who all joins the alliance here once we get it, the Foundations for a European Union. Uh, Benelux will now be known as European Union. Uh, we can see that Sweden, Switzerland, and Norway uh, all get the invitation, as does one other, but we don't know who that one other is. Yeah, we can't see. Yeah, we can't see who that is. Yeah, I wonder I wonder who that would be. Norway, Sweden, maybe Denmark? I didn't see Denmark on there. You'd assume maybe Denmark would get it. Maybe Poland? I don't know. Poland is an option, or Greece, perhaps, as well. They could be an option. I don't know who else would get it. Uh, yeah, um, I guess Finland could be, but I kind of don't want Finland to join it because that would cause issues with, you know, the Soviet Union when they go to war with Finland. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be the end of the episode. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Hope to see you on the next episode, and thanks for watching, guys.